Hey traders, in this video we will explore the calculation and application of the expected move, specifically when trading zero DTE options, and how the expected move can help inform your trading decisions and manage risk. To begin, what is the expected move? The expected move, also known as the expected range, is the amount an underlying asset is expected to move up or down in any given time frame. Now, when trading zero DD options, there is a limited amount of time to profit from the trade. The expected move can help us understand the potential movement for the asset on that particular day. This allows us to set realistic profit targets and manage risk more effectively. The expected move is typically based on historical data or implied volatility, and there are a number of ways to calculate the expected move. In this video, we will look at three methods using the implied volatility index, also known as the VIX, the options pricing model, also known as Black Shoals, and the at the money straddle. A really simple way to calculate the expected move is by using the VIX. This method is known as the rule of 16. Simply take the current VIX reading and divide by 16, and this will give you the one day expected move for the SPX. For example, if the VIX is trading at 22, divide by 16 and you will see you get a plus minus 1.38% move on that day. Now why are we using 16 in the calculation? Well there are roughly 256 trading days in a year and the square root of 256 is 16. Now if you want to get a little bit more precise you can use 15.83 but it'll more or less give you the same reading. The most popular way to calculate the expected move is based on the options pricing model. Now there are a number of pricing models, but what is widely adopted is the Black Shoals, and that's what you'll find with most brokers. Matter of fact, most brokers will actually calculate the expected move for you, um, and you can generally find that on the options chain. Uh, but we will highlight the formula here uh, and just go over a quick example. So this is the formula. We're just going to plug in some variables. Um, so again, we're looking at the SPX for zero DTE. So assuming that the SPX is trading at 4,000 with an implied volatility of 20%, and we are going to use the value one. Now I know it is zero DTE, but we're calculating the implied move or the expected move on one trading session. So we must use one. Uh, now you can use this uh, if your time horizon is different, you simply just change uh, the value in this formula. So by plugging this in, we can see we come up with a plus minus 48 point move or a 1.2% move for that day. Now this means that there is a 68% probability that the SPX will move plus or minus 48 points from 4,000 in one trading session. So between 39.52 and 40.48. If you wish to use trading days instead of calendar days, just change the denominator from 365 to 252, as there are 252 trading days in a year. And both calculations will result in, in virtually the same number. We can also use the at the money straddle to determine the expected move this method is best used and should only be used for binary events such as the FOMC, CPI, and non-farm payrolls. This calculation involves taking 85% of the value of the zero DTE at the money straddle. For example, we're looking at the zero DTE option chain for the SPX, and the at the money strike is around 44.40. And just using the mid values here for the option prices, we can plug it into the following formula. At the money call price, in this case, 20.65, plus the at the money put price, plus 11.95. And again, we're taking 85% of the value, which is gonna give us plus or minus 28 points, or 0.65%. This implies that there is a 68% probability that the SPX will move within this range in one trading session. Now, how to use the expected move in your trading, right? What is the real application? Well, when price is at or exceeds the one day move, it is more prone to reversal. 
At this point, you may want to be looking at taking profits and perhaps playing the counter trend trade. It is also attractive to write credit spreads outside of this range. Now, this should not be the only basis for decision making, uh, but we think implementing the expected move in your process uh, can provide some valuable information. Now, something we look at here is, is the expected range small or is it large? Now, this is relative, but this gives us some indication into what strategies may perform best uh, and how should we select our targets. Now, if the expected range is small, I tend to prefer short vol type strategies. So that includes credit spreads, uh, an iron condor. And I think if you're opting to trade that long butterfly spread, you may want to select a short strike that is closer to the market price, right? Because you're just not seeing that volatility. At least that's not what's expected in markets. If the expected range is large, I tend to like long vol type strategies. So perhaps buying the option outright, maybe some verticals, um, or our favorite is that long butterfly spread. And uh, generally you can select a short strike that is a little bit further out of the money uh, and improve the leverage. So I think these are some, some applications here. Uh, we definitely use this in our process uh, and find it of value. Now keep in mind that the expected move is an estimate, not a guarantee of the actual movement of the underlying asset, right? In other words, what is implied is not always realized in the market. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about zero DTE options trading, visit our website at zero DTE traders.com. Consider becoming a member, get access to our full options course with over 30 plus lessons. We cover strategies, basic concepts, advanced concepts. In addition, we teach a process on how to actually trade. So if you want to learn our approach, visit our website at zero DTE traders.com. Hope to see you soon.